What's going on, all you Duffer Brothers enthusiasts? It's your two favorite wild rascals here, and we are back once again, and we are happy to be reviewing part two of Stranger Things, volume four. That's right, we're headed back into the Upside Down, where we're going to go toe-to-toe with that Vecna. Vecna, otherwise known as Uncle Henry, also known as Juan. (laughs) (laughs) The big bad guy, and the kids return with a vengeance. In part two, one of the probably the best finales I've seen in a while. Totally rejuvenated this season. You know, we talked about the first part of Stranger Things. It really started off super clunky. Didn't know where they're going with this. The kids are a lot older now. It didn't really feel as cohesive as the other seasons. But with that being said, the finale, the last two episodes, which total at a four-hour runtime, is incredible. You know, it just takes you back to what you loved about Stranger Things in the first place. Taking you, you know, a bit talky, but really diving into each character and them facing evil once again. They really got back into what makes Stranger Things work so well from the very beginning. All the way into now. Yeah, those, you know, moments with a lot of dialogue where the characters get to relate to one each other, to, you know, to each other and to, you know, kind of comprehend what's going on in this world and develop this plan of how they're going to, you know, conquer this Vecna from, you know, killing all their friends, basically, and destroying their town. You know, everything's going to shit and it's going to take Eleven to harness her powers to be able to stop Vecna ultimately, but it's going to take the whole group all the old friends and a couple new friends within these last couple episodes. And like you mentioned, man, these, these last two episodes, just epic. What a, what a great way to end this, you know, volume four, the, you know, the penultimate season of stranger things, there's going to be one more, but this was, you know, the Duffer brothers, you know, they're masterful two episodes. These are a couple of the best episodes that they've made so far and after, especially after starting out kind of slow, it took a while to find its footing at the beginning of the season. You know, they took their time with it, but, you know, halfway in and towards the end of uh, volume one, it really started finding its footing and they really nailed, nailed it, hit a home run with these last two episodes, just epic in scope and full of references to movies and, you know, all the great stuff that we like, you know, including an old favorite of yours. And I'll let you talk about that. War games. War games, definitely. And, you know, they just really brought their A game in the second part. Me and you were talking about how the Duffer brothers were uh, wrote and directed the, the last two. You know, these are the guys, the showrunners, the creators of the show. So if we want to see good episodes, we're going to have them at the helm. And they brought their A game really right in. It was fantastic leading up to the finale where it goes straight you know, there's like war games. There's a lot of references to Red Dawn, a lot of 80s movies, you know, ac- you know, action, comedies, horror, sci-fi, all that's all wrapped into one. They'd really do it well in the, the finale of this. But uh, you're really seeing all these characters trying to take on Vecna, stop this evil creature w- once and for all, finding out about Eleven, opening the inner dimension, the, the upside down, creating Vecna by uh, killing Henry and him going there. And we see how he becomes this creature we know you know, in the finale, which is really cool. It was awesome seeing Vecna's development. You know, at the beginning, we were introduced to him. Weren't quite familiar with, you know, what his whole deal was, where he came from. But, uh, you know, the way that they told his story in this season, they did an excellent job of, you know, really putting him at the forefront, especially in the last two episodes, making him this giant villain with this, you know, purpose. And we saw how, you know, Eleven had ties to him back in, in, you know, back in that world and how eventually he went and kind of, uh, you know, discovered this upside down and like became Vecna through that world and was able to control all those, you know, see the Demogorgons and see, you know, the, the mind flare and all that. And that, that vision that he had that when it showed him getting there in the upside down and he saw the mind flare and saw all that, that was an awesome scene, just epic scene of him like fully becoming Vecna and then seeing the gang, like try to, you know, think of what they can do to outsmart him because so far throughout the the season, you know, he's outsmarted everybody. It's going to take the whole gang to take him down. And you really get the gang here working together, devising this awesome plan to really, you know, distract him on one end. So 11 can get to him. And like we mentioned before, you know, that we get help from all the characters, including uncle Eddie, And that awesome scene, that memorable scene 
Master of Puppets, Metallica playing on the rooftop. One of the best moments of the entire series. Just the most awesome. metal you could ever get, especially in <laughs> yeah. a TV show in this. That was the most yes. metal scene ever. And uh, Dustin somehow didn't lose his hearing being, you know, sitting right next to the speaker. <laughs> right. And yeah. the whole time. Uh, but that was, that, that just elevated that whole, the whole ending. It was yeah. just so good. Awesome scene. Really awesome. And I, I read today that Metallica actually saw that and they were blown away with it. They didn't know that, you know, it was going to be that kind of scene in Stranger Things. So they watched it and they were, they gave their full support and love to how that was shot. And, you know, Eddie was a character that, you know, came into the first part of this new season. We were introduced to him, you know, through the Hellfire Club. You know, he's kind of this outcast kid, the metal kid in the group, you know, but we, we realize he's a good kid, but everybody doesn't trust him. They think he's like, you know, a piece of shit, devil worshiper in the town. Nobody trusts him, but the gang, you know, takes him in as their own and realizes he's a good kid. And his, his moments towards the end were some of the highlights of this season for me, just how they were able to, give him so much to do in these last two episodes where we saw him kind of hiding the first part of the season, but these last two like really fleshed out his character and really gave him some heroic moments and him and Dustin really formed that bond. And I really believed it. Like Dustin's acting with him was phenomenal. I thought like, I believe that he's like, you know, buddies with them and really cared for, you know, where the character ended up and uh, just in that heroic moment, like really gave it his all and like uh, saw what he did to help with the group to take down Vecna and uh, we won't give any spoilers, but uh, uncle Eddie had uh, quite the, the scene there at the end and we, you kind of learn his fate at the end, but him and Dustin really had some poignant moments there that uh, were really believable. The kids did a good job this season, everybody, but old will to me, you know, <laughs> Finn Wolfhard was a little stale. Like I, I feel like he could have had some better stuff, but I think it's just because he was away from the rest of the group. I think in this last season, they're going to get the core, back together and i think that they'll make it work a little better than it did because everybody was real spread out during the season all the legacy characters for sure we're gonna bring it back and nice and tight at the end but yeah there's a lot of characters so it's it's hard to focus on so many characters and try to get a good story with them and still have them interact but yeah one of the biggest problems of the season was definitely they're spread out too much you know part being in california with argyle's character the stoner kid which is great (laughs) one of the best newer characters next to eddie um, but you know, they're spread out and then they had the rest in Hawkins and kind of, you know, tackling Vecna and bringing in 11 and then going back to the lab with Papa being episode seven, I believe it was titled. Mm-hmm. And then the, the final one, it mm-hmm. back, you know, just keeping it consistent with the Duffer brothers. I would just love to see them sure. write and direct everyone. They're just, they're so much better. They're just like a movie quality right. and why it brings it back to the original mm-hmm. feelings of stranger things, but, uh, a lot going on yeah. this season, good versus evil Vecna being the new bad guy, getting the backstory of that how that all intertwines with Eleven's character, them duking it out at the end. The kids coming together in different locations and put it, devising this plan, phase one, phase two, phase three, phase four, of how they're going to get in there and, and take out Vecna, which is really cool. And finding out that this character is behind a lot of the stuff you know that's happened in previous seasons. It's all connected. Binging this four hours and one, one night, I was just really invested. <laughs> and it flew by. I honestly, it felt like I watched two hours, but it was four. Yeah. So you're really invested in these characters. They really hash everything out it all comes together a lot of themes here a lot of messages a lot of callbacks you know the goonies stand by me the outcasts that come together to Mm -hmm. save their town we've seen it a lot of this and uh they really come together to save hawkins indiana that's right yeah the the scope of the show has just you know gotten gigantic and by the end it just opens everything up for the final season uh not to mention the uh you know with hopper being in russia and joyce and murray having to go you know, figure out how they're going to get him out and bring him back to the fold. Really excellent job, you know, able to tie everything together. You know, that's like you mentioned, so many characters to try to wrap up into one and the Duffer brothers really knocked it out of the park. And these last two, like, you know, bringing everything together and leaving it where they do with, with, uh, with the legacy characters and everybody that you want to see finally coming together again. But then, you know, the, the reunion and the good feelings, of course, don't last long and you get a little preview what's to come in the final season which is you know we don't know how many years away now or it's going to be a long painful wait yeah but uh you know going by these final two episodes i think we're going to be in for something awesome the duffer brothers were uh you know given an interview and they say they want to they want a finale that rivals kind of like the return of the king you know that that feeling of bringing the story just like from the beginning to the end and wrapping it up nicely they have the ending in mind already 
they're going to enter the writing room in August and, and, uh, you know, start putting it all together. So, man, what a great job. I had a blast, especially with these last two episodes. Yeah. I was really nervous, honestly, about the final two episodes, just how it started off. Didn't think they would have a good conclusion. So it surpassed my expectations. Really blown away by this. The score is a huge part of the show too. Really huge tracks songs from the 80s one being journey separate ways towards the end really set the yeah. atmosphere with tone what they're going for they're going to battle bringing their red dawn vibes you know robin wearing a beret and everything and they're got the guns you know they're going to, to battle and then you know obviously metallica and a bunch of other music in the show synth wave music essentially covers so it really set the atmosphere really blown away by this this is probably a few episodes i'd rewatch. had a great time with this and i really can't wait to see what they do with the the final season you know the final episode of season four kind of sets it up where they're going to be doing so going to be interesting how this all ends so that being said i'm going to give stranger things season four part two i'm gonna give it a four and a half out of five millie bobby brown hair pieces nearly perfect for me too i'm going to give it the same score a four and a half out of five kate bush hair pieces <laughs> what are you running up that hill <laughs> So we're interested hearing from all you Demi Gorgons. What did you like about Stranger Things Part 2 Season 4? What didn't you like about it? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to click subscribe. Also check out these wild kid impersonators on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram and our website, cinefellas.com for the latest, greatest TV movie news and reviews. Well, I don't know about you, Logan, but I've got a date with old Steve Harrington. <laughs> what a dream. Thank you guys for watching our video. We had a blast reviewing Stranger Things this year. It's going to be a long and painful wait till the next final season, but uh, you know, what a, a chance for us to go back and go back all the way to season one and watch them in consecutive order. And then sort of, you know, have a wrap up video for you guys before the new season, you know, the next season hits. So it gives us little homework to do. And I look forward to rewatching going back, you know, all those years ago when stranger things one came out and seeing them all small to where it ended up now. So until the next time in Hawkins, Indiana, these two wild boys are going back into the upside down. Cheese! Cheese.